organization. We want to thank you for teachers that you have gifted to impart knowledge, impart wisdom that comes directly from the, the Father gifts. We pray that as this message goes forth, that it will come only from you, that it will glorify all of you, and that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you use it to change hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, we're in John 6. <laughs> and the context of John 6 is the famous story where Jesus fed the 5,000. Jesus had been teaching all day and he knew that the people were being hungry. They would have become hungry because he was there from morning straight into evening. And along with 5,000 men and countless women and children, he performed this miraculous act with five loaves of bread and two fish. They got their fill and came back the next day with their mentality that Jesus was about to be their all you can eat for fake Uber. But unfortunately, Jesus has a different agenda in mind. If you go down to John 20, 6, 25, it reads, And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, which is also teacher, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Truly I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. Clearly they had heard Jesus preach and teach, but they did not come to know him, because they knew he would be enough to supply what they wanted, but not what he came to supply for their souls. In the words of preacher David Platt, we do not come to God to get stuff, we come to God to get God. So I'll explore three points based on the passage that we have here. The first one is the reckoning, which is going to explore the truth of the human condition and intention. Jesus knew that these people wanted him to be king. Now in that time, the Israelites were underneath the rule of the Greeks and the Romans for the past 400 years and they were oppressed. They didn't have their own system of commerce, they didn't have any rule over anything that was of their own. Everything was underneath Caesar and Herod. And when they heard that this Messiah was coming, they were saying, all right, this is our time now. We're going to break down this wall, and we're going to take back our kingdom, and we're going to run the show. But that wasn't the reason why Jesus came. They wanted Jesus to come to be their political king, not because they felt any spiritual need, but because they thought he had magical powers to supply their wants and their agendas. This is why he urged them not to just think of physical and temporal blessings, but to seek the spiritual and eternal life that he offered. People cannot earn this life by doing good works, but only by faith. Based on verse 28 and 29, where it says, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them and said, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Jesus does not mean to make food to fall from heaven to prove that he is the Messiah. Because earlier in the passage, he turned the water into wine. He cleansed the temple. He preached to the Samaritans where he said to the lady at the well, I am the true water of this life. He did healings. He raised people from the dead. So all of these stuff pointed to the fact that he was the Messiah that had come to save people from their sins. And from since the fall of Adam and Eve, man has indirectly stated that God, or Jesus, is not enough and has looked elsewhere to satisfy their satisfaction and agendas. We have become so increasingly selfish and self-centered. It's all about us and what we want. We even seek to manipulate family, friends, material things, and even God. God as a means to our agenda. If we look at Philippians 3, 18, it reads, for many of whom I have often told you, and now tell you with even tears, walk as enemies of the cross. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and their glory in their shame, with their mindset on things of this earth. 
The same way they wanted to exploit Jesus for their political and national gain is the same way in which we wish to exploit Jesus for our own personal and selfish positionings. Unless we begin to see Jesus as Savior and as enough for our life, we will continue to stray away from the purpose of which we were created by God. And through countless passages in scriptures, we see how people have turned from God and what he has called them to do, to come to do their own agenda and to seek their own way. When Eve was tempted by Satan, she saw for a split second that God, that what God gave them wasn't enough, and they ate the fruit. Sarah and Abraham, God promised Abraham that he would multiply his seed. Sarah didn't see fit to wait on God, and thus told Abraham to marry Hagar. And the result that still ensues today is a conflict in the Middle East between the Arabs and Israel. Israel didn't see God as enough when Moses went away for a certain amount of time and turned to worshiping the golden calf. This resulted in severe chastisement which continued to plague them through the years, which even resulted to them at this time being subjected, subjected to captivity and rule by other nations. Man didn't see Jesus as enough to be their Messiah because he wasn't the political Messiah that they wanted. And as a result, they crucified the only begotten Son of God. Today, man doesn't see the cross of Jesus Christ as enough and would rather go about teaching about health, wealth, and prosperity, saying that God wants you to be rich and happy, as opposed to preaching the truths of the Bible where it says that we must suffer if we want to get, live a godly life. Even up to today, man does not see the Bible as enough to govern their lives with many changes in education, putting prayer out of school, neglecting the reading of scripture. Even churches are turning away from the Bible as the only source of authority and turning to their own alternative ideas. Unless we begin to see Jesus as enough, we will only bring more chaos into the world. Now coming down, it reads, So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we must see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread to eat. And in light of all of this, this comes to the second point where Jesus says in verse 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The bread of heaven that Jesus was talking about was not some common everyday bread that people can simply eat to satisfy their appetite. And Jesus saying he is the bread of life is not saying that we don't need bread to survive. I don't think Jesus was out of his head to say. But what he was saying is that the spiritual condition of man was available in him. And that could be accepted by trusting in him and what he came to accomplish. By saying he is the bread of life and by feasting on him, anyone who eats, him, eats of him will not hunger. Jesus was sovereignly declaring that he is enough for everything that humans need for their life. He was saying that he is top. There is nothing above him. There is nothing else to gain. He is the goal and the end, and it's all about him. If you look at Colossians 1, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the first part of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him, and through him all things hold together. He makes it clear that he is enough. He is satisfactory for what we all need, which is a spiritual savior. He is the one who gives life to dead sinners. He is the one who fills our lives with purpose and sustains us to be God-honoring instruments that we were intended to be. By stating that he is the bread of life, he was saying that he would leave them fill beyond measure, not in the physical sense, but spiritually. Jesus calls them to follow him, to forget everything else, and to seek him only, because he assures them that he will be enough for them always. And Jesus was enough even for God the Father to send him to die on the cross to save people from their sins. Salvation of fallen men required a perfect man to substitute for them. But only God could take the wrath of God and survive. Therefore, Jesus was enough to take the wrath of God on the cry, uh, the wrath of God on the cross, to die, be buried, and be resurrected to save all those who believe in Him. And this message of salvation was enough.
for the disciples and the early church. If you look at Acts 5, we see Jesus' apostles understanding the true meaning of Jesus being enough and were willing to do anything for him and his gospel. In chapter 5 of Acts, it reads, while Peter and the apostles were preaching, it says, and when they had brought them, they sent them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, the same high priest that killed Jesus, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, saying, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. They were beaten. They counted this as a blessing and went on preaching knowing that it may result in death later on. Why? Because they saw Jesus as enough. They knew he was enough.